Hi everyone, welcome to the latest in our LinkedIn Live Leadership Conversation Series. I'm Barry Winkus, CSO of CPL and Head of the Future of Work Institute. I'm delighted today to be joined by Adrian DeAndrea, Director of Engineering at 3M's Digital Science Community. Adrian, I'm kind of I'm interested in the kind of 3M digital science community. I know 3M are very much, you know, positioning themselves at the forefront of this whole thing around, you know, healthcare information and the healthcare ecosystem. Can you tell us a little bit specifically about the role of that 3M digital science community and also in particular your own role in this? You know, you're the director of engineering. What does it mean? You know, what are you supporting on that journey? Right. Uh, yeah, those are good questions. So once I went to 3M, I think you, you have to, in order to have impact at a place, it takes some time. So I, I went to 3M. I we I had a good cloud experience at that point. I, I, eh, maybe a little cloud experience at that point. So my, my journey with 3M and then to the DSC became just managing and helping people, you know, hiring good team members and surrounding myself with people who were you know, persistently curious on how to solve problems and deal with a bit of chaos. So the, the digital science community is a sense, uh, a disruption of ourselves at 3M. So you can imagine companies build themselves off M&A activity and through their own innovation. 3M is uh, tremendous, 55,000 products, a, a lineage of 100 plus years, these major business groups. You can imagine that um, with a, a, a portfolio that large, you have to be able to disrupt yourself. So the digital science community, in a sense, is a is a disruptive effort to our own internal 3M. So we could do things differently. We in, in healthcare, for example, there there are hundreds, if not thousands, of companies with wonderful products to help healthcare along. 3M, you know, has been in that ecosystem of healthcare for you know people don't realize this. We've been in healthcare software for you know 30 plus years. So in that 30 plus years, you know, in buying companies and acquiring them, we, uh, every two or three years, you know, you, through M&A, you eventually acquire a lot of technical talent, you'd, but you'd also acquire a lot of technical debt and, and different ways to do things. So with our digital science community, it was uh, primarily an effort so we would disrupt ourselves so we could, we could build infrastructure, we could build standards that we could hire the right talent so that our developers, our true core developers that are within all the various business units of 3M could focus on actually developing features and, and products that are service to customer. So you think of it this way, in a startup, you have uh, full stack engineers, you have a developer who's also the networking person, who's the ops manager, who is the storage analyst. Uh, and, and we didn't want to replicate that same model uh, within 3M where you had developers who also had to learn cloud and all this. So one of the notions, the primary notions of the DSC was to disrupt ourselves so that we could build, I, I would call it the, the paved road that in order so developers could then spend more time developing and, and creating features. So uh, the DSC and, and then the community sense in each portion of the name means something. But the community sense is uh, various divisions across 3M and business groups would be able to, to put people here and we'd be able to just turn our heads and ask questions. Uh, sort of the synergies that we have in, in, in Minnesota at 3M corporate where a, a scientist can just walk down a hall or uh, go to a different building off, you know, ask to, to borrow a, a different material and create a wonderful new product. You know, so the community in that sense is is just being able to, and not through osmosis, being able to actually turn to somebody or talk to them, be able to create all sorts of new services and technologies, all to create a better developer experience within the company, so that we can innovate and continue to launch more products. Um, it's it's a, a complicated mission. Uh, we like to say every day we have a sort of a Jurassic Park problem, right? We've got all the issues of a major theme park in a a major zoo at the same time. <laughs> but um, it, if you're persistent and you're curious, you want to have the ability to affect a large portfolio of different technologies, a large portfolio of different products, and more importantly, be challenged by uh, just a tremendous number of customer problems and solve those. Uh, the digital science community, 3M, it, it's the place to be. You, it's not a cog in the wheel place where you come in and, and a process is all refined and done. You're, you're not set into a particular technology stack. 
Uh, but if you are a persistently curious person, I, I've heard the term smart creative by Eric Schmidt, you know, out of Google, um, you know, that sort of thing. But th that's the concept. The DSC is uh, helping other business units and divisions execute through a disruption of our own self. Thanks very much. Just in terms of, you know, when I hear about this Korean digital community, it just sounds like a fascinating, almost like a startup mentality within a within a large organization, which I have to say I really love, right? Um, I, I suppose, what's your, your experience so far, you know, on the journey? And I, I suppose linked with that, you know, what are the kind of people that you're seeking to come on the journey with you, right? So, you know, so experience so far, you know, mm -hmm. and all the stuff that goes with that. And then, you know, what are the kind of people you want to bring on this journey, you know, because it sounds like an exciting one. Yeah, so I, I, uh, well, it just occurred to me that this may actually be my fourth startup. Um, I'd say the primary <laughs> difference with a normal startup is you can actually cash your paychecks, right? So that's, that's a different yeah. difference. Um, I, there's a lot of work, um, not only on the technical side, but on the business side and on the operations side. So being a part of a startup within a, a already existing entity is tremendous as 3M. The, the challenges are there, but you have the backing of incredible people and support of incredible people. It's not like a venture capital group came in and said, you have to hit numbers by X, Y, and Z day. It's, it's precisely the opposite of that. You've got a, a tremendous amount of knowledge surrounding you that's all willing to help you at any time. So much different in a normal startup, but it, it, it is a startup in the sense of um, you, you have to look around once in a while and go, oh, you know what? We didn't hire somebody to take out the garbage. Who's going to take out the garbage? And <laughs> the primary difference is everybody in that room will raise their hand. So um, that's the fun part of being around something that's relatively new, you know, startup. Um, the people we're looking for, again, I would, I would echo curious, persistent, like to be challenged. And, you know, from a tech stack perspective, it's all there. It's primarily Amazon as a platform. If you're passionate about cloud, if you want to have an impact, if you want to experiment, if you want to solve customer problems and design, you know, we're looking for the traditional cloud architects. We're look, looking for the very traditional cloud DevOps, cloud infrastructure as code people. Uh, but I would say, don't let that be the primary reason for your technical journey. Look for, like my journey, having mentors, being around smart people that can help uh, you succeed in the journey. Right. So yeah. that's what we're looking for. I, I would sum it up, just be persistently curious and, and have a passion to solve customer problems using the cloud. And the, the tremendous advantage we have is we've got, you know, 55,000 products that are in the middle of digital transformation. If they have not already, we have very mature cloud based and host products, of course, but we've got thousands and thousands of other products and ideas that customers want in a digital form. They want to have access to cloud for those. And that gives you a cornucopia of, of interesting things to work on. I would say that what's that's probably one of the best parts about the journey is if you get bored or if you like to solve problems for uh, just different call customer personas, you could work for healthcare business. Then you could go work for transportation and safety. You could you could just have a career within a career within 3M that continues to help uh, you know solve those customer problems. But to do that, you you have to be persistently curious. Yeah, Adrian, a couple of nice questions coming in, which I think I come to just just to put you on the spot, right? Let, let's test your knowledge here. Here we go. It's from Roberta. Roberta, thank you for the question. What are the main digital trends you see, I suppose, Adrian, in healthcare at the moment? I see a lot of, so the EMRs are not going to go anywhere. So electronic medical record systems, they're, I worked at a provider system for six years. Those type of systems create tremendous investment into, let's call these legacy monolithic monsters. So EMRs, EHRs, those type of systems, they'll be around for a long time. Trend-wise, I, I see trust relationships. So blockchain, I see blockchain consortiums. The consortia being built between that payer, that provider, that patient, they're, they're essentially trust relationships, right? So I, I see that being a trend where you get a relationship built by, it's voluntary, uh, you know? So if you understand blockchain at all, it's, it's very much a voluntary uh, 
participation in a system. So you have that relationship between payer, provider, and patient that is agreed to. And then from that sort of blockchain, that network of trust, you see things that um, start to come out of that. You see, um, you know, processing of payment, you see coding, you see all these type of things that all those voluntary participants have to all agree to be a part of that system. So that the trend I see is more, I, I call it these consortia, more agreements between payer, payer provider and that patient population. I, I think hospitals from their side want to have more agility around the technologies and the, and the solutions for them. Um, you know, our clinicians, and, and as everybody knows, they suffer from a, a tremendous amount of click fatigue. They don't want to have 4,000 systems to do all the daily activities. So our contribution to that mission, and I think this is one of the noble reasons of, of 3M and, and specifically, you know, specifically our healthcare division, um, our business group rather, is we're trying to increase the amount of time that a physician can spend with a patient. So, you know, coding automation, AI, machine learning, of course, you know, those type of systems that help influence the care that way. So trending wise, I see a lot of blockchain activity. I used to blog about this stuff years ago. It wasn't Providence. It was a, a thing that was just going to happen. So I see those sort of big systems and populated areas agreeing to trust one another in order to have better outcomes in that area. Um, other trends, I, you know, I see niche players. But again, it's hard to be a niche player in the healthcare space. What I learned at Trail, for example, was the best thing that you can have is trust with your customer, trust that they send you the data and maintain that relationship of trust that you're uh, acting with that data responsibly, that you're securing that data. So just getting to the point in that trust relationship where you have access to data, even though there's thousands of companies out there that have wonderful healthcare products, uh, to get the trust of that customer and that, and that, and that patient that is something that even though people are trending to develop applications and things that want that access, they don't have that. I think so. I think a trend is building relationships. Yeah, that's great. Sort of an odd answer, right? You've got lots of questions coming in, here, Adrian. So you're obviously speaking, uh, you know, speaking the right stuff to the right people. Uh, good one from Declan Murphy, actually one of one of my own colleagues in the CPL group, and also a healthcare innovator, I would say, with some technologies as well. Advice on how startups scale. Uh, an idea that's working yeah. and the tech is being well received, where to next? So you've had the good and the bad in terms of your experience on the startup uh, side, Adrian. So, you know, some perspectives on that, please. Yeah, startups all scale differently, right? Some startups scale up and they don't scale up well. Um, some start up and they, they've already had the plan on how to scale. I think, uh, you know, and, and one of the questions that was asked at a startup where we company was purchased, they said, how do you keep your entrepreneurial energy at a startup when you're bought by a bigger company? And, and that becomes a scaling thing. It's it's probably, it's not fair for me to say this, but to become a, you know, 250 person uh, startup and you you have 20 million in revenue, that's not difficult in, in the scheme of things. There's a lot of startups that do that. And then once you become that 500 person uh, company and you're doing 50 to $100 million in revenue, that's an entirely different startup. And the, and the scaling has to do with people, the organization, the leaders, uh, the teams, uh, not necessarily the product having issues scaling. We, we can solve technology scaling and elasticity and, and most of the technical issues that have to do with scaling. So it becomes more, uh, from a startup perspective, it becomes more a people problem. You, you have to be able to energize your teams. You have to have, you know, strong um, vision for your teams. You have to provide the right amount of tooling and training. I've seen startups that try to sell themselves. So they stack themselves with, you know, the super duper marketing person, the legal person, and a lot of flashy names in order to get VC and in order to, to sell themselves. And that's, that is not scaling. Um, scaling a startup is, is about keeping the people in motion, you know, sort of a Newton's law thing. What, what, what's you know what's in motion stays in motion. So make sure at the at the person level, you've got their career path figured out. One of the best things that uh, one of the owners of Treo said was, "I'm going to make sure you know I have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that everybody has a good career path here. It's paid well and and has my you know the vision of the of the startup." So. Um, that's a very long answer to your question. Oh, no, it's a good one. Yeah, no, thanks, Adrian. 
Yeah, long, but you know, obviously, I always think that you know, once people who've lived the, the, the this life, you know, kind of always give the longer but right answer, shall we say? Adrian, I'm going to kind of finish at one question, and guys, thank you for all the questions that are coming up. We unfortunately can't cover them all. Um, I suppose from a personal perspective, you know, when you're sitting at home after a long week, um, you know, you're just about to kind of, you know, relax. You know, if if you ever get to relax, um, just from your personal view, you know, what 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 makes 3M such an amazing place to be in? Oh wow, I don't have a long enough time to answer that question. <laughs> You could almost summarize it to why am I here, right? I've worked for a bunch of startups and big companies. I could probably hop around. What what makes 3M unique in, in the enterprise space is, again, you've got these four very diversified business groups. There's trem- there's tons of problems to solve for customers. I love the fact that I can walk down the street and I probably walked by you know dozens of 3M products. I love the fact that uh, you know, it's it's the integrity of the company is unchallenged. It's ethics. I love the mission. I love the vision that we have to increase physician time in front of patients. I love the people that I work with. I think it's incredible to work with just the amount of smart people across the world, not just in you know one geography. I mean, you could pick up the phone and, and call division scientists at 3M and talk to them about product. You could attend a tech forum and learn about something new. So if you're an autodidact or, or, or anything like that, if you're a voracious reader, if you just want to learn how a thing works, 3M is that. Uh, and then I would say finally, the, the career within the career, having the ability to move around the world, my own journey, uh, 3M moved my family from New York to Austin, Texas uh, to do some stuff there. And then from Austin, Texas to Dublin, Ireland. You couldn't get any more different in, in geographies <laughs> from a people, food, and political perspective than doing that, right? Or a weather perspective. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's something that's tough out here. Um, but I would say there's many reasons why 3M is a wonderful place. Um, from a career perspective, work-life balance, smart people perspective, product customer perspective, there is never an end to stuff to do. It is an absolute blast. I can't think of anywhere better to end our short interview than there. Um, I would say, guys, that look, you know, the 3M Digital Science Community in Ireland is hiring. It's active. We're very much proud to be a collaborator and partner with 3M in Ireland. And, you know, I think, Adrian, it would be okay for me if the guys can touch base with you via the LinkedIn stream as well. I know you're very open to kind of interacting with the right type of talent. And with that, Adrian, I'd just like to say, look, thank you very much. Uh, I know now I'll be asking you for a couple of things. One is to give me some tips on golf. And then the second one potentially is I might ask you for a little bit of mentorship. Is that? <laughs> well, I, I would I would just quickly respond. Golf is a good walk, spoiled according to Mark Twain. So don't spoil your good walk. <laughs> Have fun yeah, on your journey. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thanks very much, Adrian. I very much appreciate your time, and thank you everybody for listening in. As always, you've had a massive reception. People from all over the world, Adrian. So you, you've definitely uh, made an impact today. So thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.